to the channel. If you think I've got a daft grin on my face, I have. Uh, it's because I've uh, borrowed Mrs. Local's new car for the day. We picked this up um, three or four days ago. And uh, I managed to persuade her to lend me the keys for a few hours and go and have a play in it. This is, let me try and get this right, this is the new Mini Cooper, John Cooper, uh, works Cooper, it's the Mini JCW. And it's the facelifted version, it's only just come out of this, we didn't know that when we ordered the car. This is L's uh, PCP was coming up and um, we fancied something a little bit quicker than a convertible Mini Cooper. So we settled on the JCW and uh, it just really threw good fortune more than anything else fell at the time that um, many were just going over to the facelifted model. So this model, I, I, as far as I understand, has only been out a week or so. We one of the first, um, we got one of the first deliveries. And here it is, it's in, uh, we, we ordered it in Moonstone Grey with a black roof. Um, we ordered a couple of packs with it. I can't remember exactly what the packs are, but it, it's got um, a head-up display. It's got the enhanced sat-nav and connection connectivity and things like that. So I thought I'd bring it out today and give you my driving impressions of the new Mini Cooper. I got the new Mini JCW. Let me get it right. Well, let's have a look at the car itself first. Um, a lot of the changes on this facelift, apparently, are uh, cosmetic rather than under the skin. So the car remains fairly similar to the previous model under the skin. It's just a bit of a midlife facelift, if you like. Uh, but I quite like what they've done with it. They've put a bigger sort of pretend diffuser thing on the back, the twin exhaust. It's got a bigger grille on the front. They've got rid of front fog lights. Well done, Mini. Somebody's been watching, somebody at Mini's been watching my video on fog and fog lights. Front fog lights don't do anything, do they? Um, so it seems to have some bigger intakes uh, at the front there, diverted air into the brakes, that kind of thing. They've replaced all the chrome trim with this sort of gloss black, piano black uh, trim, including the badges, which I think looks really good. There is a sort of no-cost adaptive damper um, option. We didn't opt for that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of adaptive dampers. I, I just like a nice uh, passive setup. We didn't opt for bigger wheels because I prefer the smaller wheels. Slightly higher sidewall on the tyre. Just gives it a better drive. Allows you to feel the car at the limit a little bit more. Makes it a little bit less snappy. So the JCW sits, um, it's not quite at the top of the performance range um, with, with Mini's range. But the, the Mini range goes, I think there's a Mini 1 which is the, the bog standard Mini. Then there's the Cooper. And Mrs, Mrs Local's previous Mini was a Cooper convertible. That has the 136 brake horsepower 1.53 cylinder engine in it. Uh, above that is the Cooper S, which has 180 something brake horsepower. And then there's the JCW, and this car, um, depending on where you read, it's somewhere between 228 and 231 brake horsepower. So let's say 230 brake horsepower. Um, above the JCW, there's a special edition, the GP, uh, which I think has around 300 brake horsepower. But as far as the normal range of minis, this performance-wise sits uh, at the top, apart from the GP. And just think about that for a minute, 230 brake horsepower in a mini. So when I was a young man, when I was in my early 20s, when I was a traffic officer in the police, um, the really, really high performance, top-end saloon cars and sports cars, but certainly saloon cars, things like the Escort Cosworth, the, the Lancia Delta Integrale, that kind of stuff. They had 200 brake horsepower, and they were pretty, much, pretty much the fastest things on the road. Yes, you could buy, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that, but they were they were really rare to see those on the road. 
but Cosworths, Integrales, Celica GT4s, things like that, they had 200 brake horsepower. And I remember the first car I had with 200 brake horsepower, it was a Subaru Impreza Turbo, 2000 year model. And I just remember at the time thinking, this is the, this, you don't need any more power than this, this is the fastest thing on the road. And things have moved on so far. In, in those days, a hot hatchback, I remember having a, a Golf GTI back in the early 90s, a Mark II, it had 115 brake horsepower. And it was a reasonably quick car. It wasn't what you'd call a really fast car, but it was reasonably quick, an eight valve, 115 brake horsepower. And that was a hot hatchback, that was a Golf GTI. Now, Minis, have 230 brake horsepower. There was a sort of limit in the sort of late 80s, early 90s for front wheel drive. And, and I think it was it was approaching 180, 200 brake horsepower. Beyond that, those cars became really difficult to drive because of what's called torque steer. And torque steer is the tendency of a car to jiggle about under acceleration. Because the front wheels are not only steering the car, they're also transmitting the power to the road, uh, that power transmission in a higher power car can really tug the wheel around in your in your hands. Uh, and back then, yeah, 200 brake horsepower was probably really, really at the very limit of what was, you know, what front wheel drive cars were capable of. These days, it's much higher, and that's down to stability control systems and traction control systems and things like that. But I still think it's really impressive that you can buy a Mini like this with 230 brake horsepower. I think that's absolutely fantastic. And this car is a hoot. You know, I said at the beginning of the video, you've caught me with a smile on my face. This is an absolute blast to drive. I've got the M2 Competition at home with 400 brake horsepower. Yeah, I love that. And that really likes to be driven. It likes to be driven hard through corners. It's a bit like a lurcher. Have you ever seen a lurcher going after rabbits? It's quick, it accelerates really fast, it's fast in the corners. This car is more like a Jack Russell. It's snappy, it's keen, it's enthusiastic. Um, it changes direction really quickly and really efficiently. And that's where the fun is in this car. So I've just been driving it over the Shap Road, but I'm taking on this little road now over towards Orton this is the kind of road that suits a Mini JCW. So that power delivery, there is a little bit of torque steer still. I mean, it's unavoidable with a front wheel drive car. You can just feel it tugging the wheel a little bit. Just as under acceleration, especially when you've got a little bit of steering lock applied. But it's not intrusive and it doesn't spoil the drive. Steering in this car, pin sharp. Loves accelerating out of those slow to medium speed corners. Like I said, it's a snappy little terrier, this thing. Likes to be chucked into the camber. Car to take by the scruff of the neck, really. This the engine. I think the engine is pretty impressive, really. It's it's a typical modern turbocharged engine, by which I mean the torque comes in very low down the rev range. So those cars I was talking about before, Integrales, Cosworth, that kind of thing. You had to have three, three and a half thousand revs, maybe even four thousand revs on before the turbo kicked in, and then it came in with a whoosh. Modern turbocharged engines are very different to that. Almost tuned a little bit like, I hesitate to say it, but a modern turbo diesel, where the revs um, don't need to be high for that torque to be coming in. The turbo is much smaller, it spins up a lot quicker, lower revs. And the car, effectively, it means the car doesn't really feel turbocharged. There's no point at which you think, oh, that's the turbo coming in. Um, this engine is really willing, right from low down the rev range. 
steering like I say it's not darty um, actually on, on faster roads more flowing roads motorways as well the car is extremely stable um, it's one of the really impressive things about this car it's it, it, well, I'll say this about the M2 comp but that's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde car you can drive it normally you wouldn't know what kind of performance it's got same with this thing really you can poodle along in this car drive it normally up and down the motorway it's very stable it feels like a much bigger car than it is but then get it on a road like this get it somewhere where there's no traffic you can have a proper play with it and that's where it's fantastic just that little change of direction there Yeah, this is a hoot. Brakes are really effective. It's got a nice firm pedal when you just, I, I, that gives me a lot of confidence when I'm driving. Um, first press of the pedal gives you a really nice strong bite. Um, got to be careful. You've got to be aware that firm braking in this car really lightens the rear end. And this is a tendency of front wheel drive hot hatchbacks the rear end can feel a little bit lively under braking especially if you have a little bit of um, a little bit of steering lock applied if I give a good squeeze on the brakes there you can see I'm just working a little bit to keep it you know in the dark going in the direction that I want it to but it's predictable you know it's going to do it um, and the car really likes being on the gas it really likes being on the gas through the corners as I've said before many times, that allows you to just maintain that rear end grip. And once you get this car settled in a corner, it's very predictable. Little movements of the gas pedal give you, you know, it, it, you could tighten your line or loosen your line a little bit just by slight deviations in what you're doing on the gas pedal. Uh, the damping's really good. Like I said, we didn't opt for adaptive damping. We adapted. We, uh, we opted for just standard passive dampers. Nice compromise. You can tell these cars are developed in this country because they suit British roads really well. Yes, it rolls a little bit. I've no doubt if you try really hard, you can get an inside rear wheel to lift up a little bit through the corners. But again, that's, that's the normal tendency of hot hatchbacks, isn't it? Just lift a little leg up, cock a leg up through a corner. Here is where it's at its best. Little bumpy B roads like this, the car's up and down. You're on and off the brakes, stabbing the gas out of corners. This car's with you all the way. And it's enjoying itself as well. Some of the other improvements they've made with this car, it's got a bigger uh, TFT screen for the sat-nav and all the other functions of the car. It's touch screen as well, so you don't always have to fiddle about with the iDrive system. I'm not a huge fan of, of touch screens in cars. When you're on the move, your finger tends to be doing this, but if you're stationary and you're programming your sat-nav in, it's easier to do it on the screen than it is to do it through um, through the iDrive. It has an app on the phone as well. You can set your sat-nav through your phone and it'll send the directions to the car. The options pack that we chose includes the head-up display. Um, again, I've, I've never really 
gone in for stuff like that but actually having driven the car a good day out in it on Friday, Sunday today, having driven it today, I actually quite like the head-up display. Um, it gives you the sat-nav directions. If you've not got sat-nav uh, programmed, just shows you your speed. So you're not having to look right down at the dashboard. It's got a new um, instrument cluster, which is completely uh, digital now, TFT. But they're nice and clear. It doesn't reflect the sun. It's got like a matte finish on it. Um, and it doesn't overload you with too much information either. I've got the ref counter, big fuel gauge on the right, speed right in the middle, and all the other little bits of information that, that you need. Um, inside, it's got these really very, very comfortable sports seats. I really like these seats. And for a gentleman of my width, they are perfectly proportioned. Um, the steering wheel is like another one of these really, really thick steering wheels, and I've heard journalists complaining about that. And, it, and I sort of get it. It's especially these sort of ear things here. These, these sort of if, you, if, you, if you're a person who, who drives with your hands at ten to two, they sit on your hands. But it's really, it is a really thick rim on this steering wheel. Um, the only issue I've had with the steering, actually, once you're driving, it, it feels all right. It's, it's absolutely fine. Uh, the only issue I've had is that that my the sort of heel of my thumb tends to press this volume control here and switch the radio on at random times. Uh, that's mostly when I'm really concentrating on driving the car and driving through a series of bends or whatever. So all of a sudden the radio comes on and it's, it's just that. So I need to get used to that. But Mini, maybe you need to think about where the placement of those buttons are because they are literally right under the heels of, um, or the balls of my thumbs. Other than that, the controls are really nice, got a great gearbox. I, 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 the gear change is much nicer than it was in the previous Mini Cooper that we had. Um, it's got a much nicer feel about it, it's a snickier gear change. Um, it just feels like it's already bedded in, this, this gearbox. I'm not sure if the gear ratios are different in this than they are from the Cooper, but Bear in mind, it's got nearly 100 brake horsepower more. It always felt a little bit long geared, um, that, that convertible Mini Cooper. You know, if you're driving on, uh, on, if you're driving on B roads, back roads, it tended to be second and third gear all the time. This car, I, I suspect it's because it's just got that much more power. It feels like, a much, like it's much stronger in, in the gears. Um, and it doesn't feel as undergeared as the, um, sorry, as overgeared as the as the previous Mini Cooper did. One of the other good things about these cars is that they are surprisingly large inside and capacious. Um, I'm six foot. I quite often struggle with headroom. I have this seat on its lowest setting, but I've got loads of headroom here. Um, if I put the seat right back. It feels as though you could be, I don't know, six foot eight, six foot nine, and still comfortably drive this car. I've recommended these to taller drivers before because they, they really do. Uh, and again, I probably, this is the German and the BMW probably coming out in the uh, in the design process. Uh, but these cars really do fit tall drivers very well. Not so sure how you get on with the back seats if you were six foot nine, but certainly as a driver, um, don't ever be put off a mini if you're taller. It'll fit you very well. The car has three driving modes, so we'll start at the bottom with green, that's your typical eco driving mode. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be buying a John Mini Cooper Works Cooper S Mini Cooper Works if I wanted to save fuel. I buy one of these cars because I want to blast around a little bit and I'm not really that bothered about how much fuel I'm using but it's doing the typical eco things um, I'm, I'm giving the gas a really good squeeze it's got a, a meter here on the dashboard telling me to back off the gas and it's it's just trying to encourage me to change up to the highest gear all that kind of stuff I've put it in just to show you we'll probably never really use that mid mid is clues in the name it's the mid setting this is the default setting every time you turn the ignition off and turn it back on again, it'll default to this mid setting. Um, and in mid setting, well, you get a good response from the engine, linear response from the throttle pedal. Uh, the exhaust isn't too roty, so I think it's got maybe got some flaps in the exhaust. 
I, I suspect as well that there is some engine noise piped into the cabin. I don't know. I don't mind it. It sounds fine to me. But in mid, this is, you know, jump in the car, drive it to work, drive to the shops, leave it in this setting. It's got plenty of performance, even there in fourth gear, little squeeze on the gas and it's all there. And then the third setting is Sport. As with most of the cars of this type, Sport Plus turns up the wick with the responsiveness of the throttle. Suspected opens a valve in the exhaust, certainly pipes more noise into the cabin. And puts the car right up on its toes, so a little squeeze of the gas pedal gives you, you know, most of the car's performance. And in sport, yeah, it's a hoot. It's a little hooligan, really. Um, if you're expecting me to compare it to other cars of this type, forget it. I'm not a car journalist. I've not driven a Fiesta ST or whatever the Renault Clio sport version is or other equivalent cars i've not driven any of those so if i get the chance to drive them i'll give you a comparison but this is just my my driving impressions of this this particular car get the car in a constant radius turn be smooth with it and it will really cling on and the brakes are excellent <laughs> turn the radio on then with the thumb So that's my thoughts on the new Mini John Mini Cooper Works Cooper S, the Mini JCW. If you've got one of these, let me know what you think. Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you've got any questions about the car, you can ask that as well. You're going to be seeing quite a lot more of this car. Watch out for my next video. Those of you that come here for the more formal advanced driving content, the IAM Rosper police type stuff. I've got a series of videos that are right up your street that are coming along soon. So watch my next video, I'll do a little introduction into that so you know what I'm talking about. But you will see plenty more of this car because it's got a gearbox, a manual gearbox with a clutch. This is ideal for demonstrating some of the advanced driving stuff that you'd be expected to do for your advanced driving test. So look out for that series of videos that's coming up. But thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video. I've definitely enjoyed making it, in case you hadn't guessed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and press the thumbs up and all that kind of jazz, you know the score. I'm going to have a look at the website as well, reglocal.com, loads more information there about advanced and performance driving, motorcycling, all that kind of stuff. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.